Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Workforce Wednesday of the 2021-2022 school year. My name is Zach O'Berry, and I'm a project manager with the Kentucky Chamber of Commerce Foundation, and I help to direct our Bus to Business program. I would like to thank our sponsors, the Kentucky Society for Human Resource Management, or KY Sherm, and KCTCS for their investment in helping bring in classrooms to careers. In addition to our virtual live sessions, weekly e-news, and critical jobs of the week graphics, this year we have launched a contest for students in grades K through five to participate in throughout the school year. Students in grades kindergarten through fifth grade are invited to either download or request a printed copy of our newly released Bus to Business coloring book. This coloring book highlights critical Kentucky jobs and in different industries, including construction, healthcare, equine, and manufacturing. Each month, students will be invited to submit their completed coloring pages online, and selected winners will be featured on social media and on the Bus to Business website. For the month of January, please color, or February, please color the manufacturing page found on page four and submit your entry using the link below. All this information, including links to turn in submissions, can be found at kychamber.com slash bus to business. Closed captioning has been enabled for this webinar, so please feel free to use that feature if you need this. Today's session is being recorded as well as live streamed to YouTube and will be available to rewatch and share afterwards. Whether you're one of the 200 students tuning in with us live today or watching at a later date, thanks so much for joining and I hope you all learned something new. For today's session, we'll be hearing from Link Belt Cranes. Link Belt Cranes is a leader in the design, manufacture, and sales of telescopic and lattice boom cranes with headquarters in Lexington, Kentucky. Link Belt's core production base and center for worldwide operations is a 770,000 square foot manufacturing facility located here in Lexington. With major expansion plans over the last 10 years, along with continuous improvement philosophies, this facility has emerged as the most modern crane facility in North America. Throughout the session, we'll be watching the chat for any questions and we'll have a time for question and answer at the end. I'll now kick it over to the team at Linkfeld. Thanks so much. Hi and welcome. Uh, I am Melvin Porter, CEO and President of Link Belt Cranes. As Zach said, uh, we're located here in Lexington, Kentucky. We've been here since 1975 and this is our corporate headquarters. And as you saw by the video, we design and manufacture both on highway and off highway telescopic as well as lattice cranes. Now, when you look at our cranes, the uh, retail price to a customer ranges from anywhere from $600,000 to upwards of $3 million, depending on the options and specifications, as well as the tonnage size. Um, we uh, sell these cranes for use in a number of applications. To give you an idea, uh, some of these are used in bridge and highway work, some in the industrial application, wind farms, wastewater treatment, and airports, just to name a few. We take great pride in what we make here, and it's always great joy for our employees to see our cranes at work across the nation, as well as various parts of the world. I look forward to uh, letting you learn more about Link Belt today, and hopefully you'll join our team in the future. Thank you, and I'll turn it over to Shay. Thank you, Melvin. Good morning, everyone. My name is Shay Green, and I am the Supervisor of Employee Relations here at Link Belt. I actually just celebrated my sixth anniversary with the team here earlier this month. 
And while in HR, we have several responsibilities, one primary responsibility is recruiting. So as was stated by Zach and Melvin, we are the corporate office located here in Lexington, just near Hamburg. We sat on just over 100 acres and have approximately 700 associates here in Lexington. While every role does require a high school diploma or GED, not every position requires a four-year degree. We do participate in uh, the Kentucky Fame AMT program, as well as the machinist program at BCTC. Uh, those students that are sponsored by a company, they actually go to work three days at their sponsoring company. Most get paid for that time. And then they go back to school the other two days, typically a Tuesday and Thursday. But during this time, they are not only getting the coursework uh, there at BCTC, but they are also getting the hands-on experience um, to help them in, the, in their field. Linkbelt also partners with local high schools, uh, such as those that are on this call this morning, to come on site and to have a plant tour and meet with various associates in the particular fields that they may be interested in. If your school is interested in coming in for a plant tour, um, I will put my contact information there in the chat box. Please feel free to contact me. We would love to host you here at Linkbelt. Today, we have various associates uh, that will be discussing their experience here at Linkbelt, as well as uh, what their respected areas do for the organization. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to put those in the chat box, uh, and we'll be make sure that we do get to that. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Donna Lay. Good morning, everyone. As Shay said, my name is Donna Lay. I am currently the warehouse manager here at Linkbelt. I have been here since 1987, where I hired in as a temporary employee. And in March of 20, uh, March of 1988, I was hired. So this coming March will be my 34th year with the company. During that time, I have had great opportunities for advancement internally within the company. Um, in 87, when I started, I was a receiving clerk. And in 19, around the 1991-92 timeframe, they built a new transportation uh, and PDC service part shipping building. I moved into that area and was the transportation coordinator there for about three years and then went out to actually schedule on the manufacturing shop floor, stayed out in that area for about four years, and then I was promoted up into the purchasing department where I was a buyer for the purchasing um, area and transitioned from that job into um, being a planner. Um, stayed in that position just until recently last year. We had added a 60,000 foot square, uh, 60,000 square foot new warehouse facility and I was promoted to that position and now currently run that warehouse and the service parts distribution uh, shipping area. This company has given me great opportunities with advancement, and um, I do not have a college degree and um, have been uh, very happy with the employment that I've had the opportunity to um, experience here and have been able to grow with the company. Currently in our warehouse, um, we have several jobs that um, employees can uh, move around internally and cross-train. We receive on our receiving dock anywhere between five to 700 parts a day. Those employees um, currently operate fork trucks um, to unload freight off of uh, tractor trailer trucks. Um, we receive those parts and then we have a team who locates that material into the warehousing area. Upon the parts being located, then we have what we call our picking team. And they pick the material that is sent over to the assembly line that allows them to build cranes on a daily basis. With the expansion of this warehouse, we also have innovated some technology in the new warehouse that you saw on the video. And we use what we call the parts train to deliver that material to the assembly lines. And we have some new storage um, uh, capabilities in our warehouse. And it's a, a technology we have not had here before. The other part of the business is a service parts business. So this area, these employees are um, picking the parts, packaging the parts, and getting them prepped in order to put on UPS trucks, Federal Express trucks, and our LTL carriers that they ship out daily. Most parts go to our customers 
all over the world. So there are great opportunities here for um, anyone who is looking for a job that does not require college education. Um, and I highly um, recommend the link belt is something that you might pursue uh, in the future to um, move internally within the company and to have a great career for the rest of your life. Thank you. My name is Katie Bush and I work in the HR and Benefits office. I am actually the HR and Benefits assistant. I work closely with Shay here and I also work closely with our payroll and benefits administrators. Um, I'm actually approaching my one year anniversary with Linkbell on next Tuesday. Um, this has been an amazing experience for me. I was hired in, actually not had completed my four year degree, but because of the um, tuition program that we have with Link Belt, I was able to finish my bachelor's of science in business administration and hopefully I'll continue to move up within the human resources department here. Uh, one of my favorite things about this position is that I get to interact with everyone and with all of the new hires. I will sit with them and discuss all of our benefit options that we offer here at Linkout. And so that is our welders, assemblers, painters, warehousers, and our executive team. Um, one of the first faces that you come in contact with when hired on with Linkout. I'm going to turn it over to Mike now. Good morning. My name is Michael Clevenger. I'm the director of production. Uh, I've been here almost 33 years. I walked in the company's doors in 1989, fresh out of a vocational school. And I've dedicated most of my life to trying to bring uh, talent from those schools on board into Link Belt because I realized what I found at a very young age that we work at a great place. It's a great, it offers great opportunities. Um, we actually have like uh, 16 supervisors. All of them have been promoted from within, from the welding, painting, machining, assembly backgrounds. Uh, basically everything that uh, the very valuable instructors that you all work with or within the uh, vocational organization, uh, we, we build cranes with those skills, all the way from raw material to a finished product. Um, there's nothing uh, out here that no one has not been trained for as far as the, the vocation uh, areas. And I'm excited to um, share what we have with any students that would want a career at Link Belt. Thanks, Mike. My name is Richard Schultz, and I'm Vice President of Manufacturing here at Link Belt Cranes. I've been here almost 32 years. I grew up on a family farm in Western Kentucky and went to UK and got a bachelor's of science in agricultural engineering and specializing in power and machinery. My background and my degree uh, fit very well with heavy equipment and leak belt cranes. So uh, I started working here in design engineering in uh, 1990 and I progressed to vice president of engineering. Just recently, I transitioned to vice president of manufacturing. You know, at some point, most students sit down and they're asked to write down their goals for their life. And as a senior in college, I was asked to do that. And I said, I'd like to lead a team of uh, engineers to develop new products in the heavy equipment business industry. And that's something that I got to accomplish by working here at Link Belt. So the opportunity to do what you wanna do, whether you're in an engineering program, uh, welding, or whatever else you might do, you can do that here at Link Belt if you're interested in heavy equipment and learning more about the career in that area. Also, like Katie, I had the opportunity to take advantage of the continuing education benefit here at Link Belt and obtained my master's in business administration through that program and a benefit of the company. Now, as VP of manufacturing, uh, my teams are responsible for the facilities and infrastructure that produce our cranes, as well as the procurement of materials and components that come to us from around the world. The logistics of material movement within our facilities the production process to fabricate and assemble cranes, and the quality assurance program to meet our tough standards. In closing, Link Belt Cranes is a Kentucky business which employs Kentuckians to manufacture world-class cranes, which meet our customers' lifting needs around the globe. Thank you.
Dorian, are there any questions or anything that anyone has for us right now? Yeah, I think at this time, if Dorian, if you want to go ahead and pop on camera and then lead uh, maybe a little bit more facilitated conversation, and also for any students who are tuning in with us live, this is a perfect time to ask employers about their company, ask them any question about how they got into their jobs, how they got interested. I mean, really anything you want to know, this is a great time to put it in the chat. Thanks, Dorian. Uh, thank you, Zach. Uh, my name is Dorian Mo, and I'm the Talent Pipeline Project Manager for the Southeast Region of Kentucky with the Kentucky Chamber. Um, I want to thank you all from uh, coming in this morning from the whole group, uh, Shay and your crew. We really appreciate you taking the time to come in and speak to the students and just share about your company and what it takes to, to build up into these uh, careers. And as we know, there's a lot of schools who offer training manufacturing and our students need to have a career pathway. So being able to hear about the uh, job that you do, the work that you do, and how all of you have, have come into the organization and, and worked your way up, uh, that's very inspiring to these students. And we hope that many of them will choose this field and um, try to fill some of those vacant positions in the manufacturing industry. I don't see any questions in the in the chat at this time. Um, Zach, do you want me to just pick a few of the questions on our list to ask her team? Yeah, if you just want to go through those questions, Dorian, there's just some of them that you know that you think would be relevant. That'd be great. Okay. Um, it seems like all of you, the uh, the overlying message that we receive is a very positive uh, vibe that we get from everyone there. You you seem to really enjoy your job, but. Um, could, could you describe a little bit about the culture of your company? What is it like uh, to, to work a day at, uh, at, there at Link Belt? Um, so Katie and I are kind of uh, the younger ones as far as experience goes here. Um, you know, we're just kind of starting out our Link Belt careers, but, and I'll let them kind of chime in as well. But you know, we are the corporate office, so everyone is here. We have, like I said earlier, about approximately 700 associates here on site. So you do have the flexibility of if you're having a problem or having an issue that you need assistance in uh, getting an answer or helping with that, you do have the ability to go up and find anyone. We do have an open door policy. Uh, we're not a manufacturing company where you are tied down to a line. You know, they do have the ability to go to engineering, go to quality um, and kind of talk to those associates to help them if they need it. Uh, personally, I feel like the culture is very a very much a family type atmosphere. Um, the company tries its best to take care of its associates. Um, we do different things throughout the year. Um, of course, right now, COVID pending, but you know, we, we try to adapt with that uh, to make sure that we are able to kind of form those relationships with everyone. I don't know if anyone else has any feedback or anything. Um, just one thing I would like to kind of add. Um, over the years, I've, I've developed friendships with many people, and I still hold those friendships with employees that have actually retired and left the company. And those are very dear friends that um, I hold, you know, very close to me still. So to Shay's point, we do try to offer a family environment, and we try to always respect one another and help one another. And I think it works very well here because we're a smaller company. Um, and like I said, it's very easy to develop those close relations, relationships with employees, other employees um, that help you get through your day every day um, and, and do your job. But not only that, but allow um, that friendship to continue on for years after. Oh, I just saw that someone's uncle has retired. Can we get a name just to see if anyone knows? Okay, yeah. 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 So, do you want to take any of those other questions? Yeah. Um, if, if you want to lead it off as far as you're going to be the subject matter expert. I see that uh, Ron Adams has asked a few questions here. You know, how many cranes, how do you make these cranes? Um, that's a pretty uh, complicated process, a little bit, but, um, and Mike's been doing it for a long time, but 
Uh, we weld, we buy steel plate and we weld together the structures. So on our video, you may have noticed a lot of uh, fabrication going on. So we actually weld those plates together. They're high tensile strength steel. Um, we make the telescopic booms here at our facility and those are um, extra high tensile strength steel. And so those are made here in our, our facility as well as the lattice booms. Um, so it's a, it's a lot of uh, structural welding we do, machining. Um, you know, we view our core competencies the, uh, as a factory as uh, head refabrication, machining head refabrications, and then also painting those uh, as well as uh, assembly is our core competencies here for our crane products. Um, how many do we make a year? That's kind of a little bit proprietary, but we usually are somewhere between uh, three to 500 units a year. And uh, that's kind of the number we produce. The cost to make is also a little bit uh, proprietary, but Melvin mentioned earlier, um, our cost to the customer ranges from like $600,000 to um, $3 million. So uh, we have a little bit of range there. That's quite a big target, but it depends on the size and uh, capacity of the crane. Our primary uh, outlets are through a distribution network. So across the country, we have link belt distributors that uh, buy the cranes from us and then retail those to uh, crane rental companies that are located throughout the US. Um, Mike, how long does it take to make a standard crane? Well, you want to start just from the, in, starting in the facility. It's roughly about four months, but there are parts that we purchase that have extremely long lead times and can be up to six months just to get those components. Okay, we have one other question in the in the chat, but um, it, and they're just asking what the entry level pay for a high school graduate. So I, I wanted to ask you, um, do you hire students straight out of um, high school, or is a high school graduate all that is required, or do they need to get some type of training? And if so, what training would you be looking for in future employees? Um, so a high school education or a GED is a requirement and uh, we, the age requirement is at least 18 years of age. Um, as far as the training that's needed, we have several positions here um, that really will train you on the job. Um, warehouse being one of those, we actually just implemented a um, forklift training uh, last year, I believe, the year before. And so someone could come in that has zero experience on a fork truck and, and will definitely um, get them trained and certified on a fork truck. Pay is going to be a little different just based off of the job um, classification that you are in. Um, but we are within the industry and, and definitely have the benefits and everything to help back up the total compensation. Great, thank you. And do you um, need to continue to get training once you're hired in? If you did come in with, with uh, zero experience, you said you would train them on the job, but do they need any um, outside training from a third party or will, could they get all the training they need right there on the job? So for positions like assembly, uh, welding, there is a requirement as far as just having some, um, some type of experience. Uh, what we look for is, you know, someone that may have went to vocational school while in high school and, and took welding classes, uh, or somebody that is going to a, a technical college to earn their certifications. Um, the positions, though, I feel like all positions, and Donna and Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, all positions, you're still going to have that on the job training. You're going to be paired with a more senior associate that has the experience, understands our policies and procedures on how to do something, and just to make sure that you are getting the proper and adequate training that you need for your position. Okay, thank you. Now, um, this one can be for all of you. This is just kind of a fun question if you want to um, take turns and go around the table. Could you tell us, um, all, because all of you came in with different levels and types of experience into your each of your positions. So what do you know now that you wish you would have known when you graduated high school that might have given you a leg up or might have just helped you a little bit? Oh, I don't know. Maybe start. Oh. 
Um, I would have to say when you come out of high school, you may not know exactly what you want to do. And so coming into a job, especially a position with Blank Belt, you can kind of learn, like you may come here and start as a warehouser, but engineering might, you know, become an idea that you gain while you're here. And then you have an option here to do uh, our tuition reimbursement program. So it's something you could look into. The more you learn about Blank Belt and just manufacturing, you could be I'm interested in accounting or there's so many different components that you don't know and don't really get to really see until you're kind of out in the world. And I feel like Link Belt's a good spot to like interact with people that do a little bit of everything. You have people that have been here that are just co-op students. You have people here that have been here as a lifelong career. So it's really interesting and a diverse group of people to kind of maybe get an idea of what you want to do and be exposed to. Thank you. That was that was a great answer. Uh, I think that career exploration is very important, and, and especially to high school students as they're getting close to graduation, it's very important to start looking into career options and see what they're all about and try to find something that that would interest them. We have another question in the, in the chat now, and it's asking, how has technology changed over the years, and as to how long it takes to build the cranes and can you assemble um, more in a shorter period of time? So I guess now that you have technology working on your side, can you build them quicker with the new technologies? You want to take <laughs> uh, well, let me let me start with that one a little bit and maybe Michael add something to it. Um, right now I think that we have um, the facilities to build more cranes and probably the demand is there to send more cranes to our customers but um, the global supply chain issue is impacting us uh, to do that so we have um, technology like computer systems that help us order our parts and understand our needs but you know if our suppliers can't deliver those parts that, that becomes a limitation to us uh, so that's somewhat of a even though you have great technology you still have to be able to get those parts to be able to put everything together. And that could be from a, uh, a plate all the way down to a, a nut or a bolt that you can't get a particular day that might hamper you from, from doing your job. Uh, so that's kind of, uh, it's even though the technology has changed, those, that's kind of the, uh, uh, what I've heard called the blocking and tackling and making a crane just like you would on a football field. You got to have the nuts and bolts to be able to put it together. And so if you don't have those things, you can't, you know, the technology doesn't help you very much. But uh, we do have advanced systems as far as machining, um, our components and different things we do here, uh, very high tech devices that have helped us in some ways produce product a little faster, but also with greater accuracy. So we've got uh, more precise machine equipment and, um, and frames and structures that we use today that we didn't have maybe uh, 30 years ago because we've advanced our capability to machine those products. Um, we can assemble more in a shorter period of time, but again, there are limitations on the uh, components that we can get. Mike, do you have anything else to well, add? Along with the technology as far as the fabrication of our product, mm -hmm. we've also introduced a lot of new technology into our product. You know, the things that you see in your vehicles now, backup cameras, computers, those are all a part of what we do now. So it has increased some of the, the tack time, or I mean the uh, cycle times, or the actual assembly times just due to that technology. Uh, so I mean, technology is on the front end has helped us produce, but, you know, technology also has been designed into our product for safety. And it, it, we just, uh, it's a, it's not a speed thing. It's more of a just quality, safety. Okay, so that, that's great. That We appreciate you, you bringing that aspect into it. Um, so Ryan, is, Ryan Adams is putting these questions in from the students, just so you know that these questions were submitted by the students, even though he's the one putting them in. So um, while we wait for the next one to come up, let me ask you this. You have touched on the fact that you your culture there, you're very family-like, very close-knit company, um, and sounds like you're very supportive of each other. So we do have one question on our list um, that students might be 
interested to know, this is a large company, you have heavy demands, you, you spoke to how many parts would be delivered on a regular basis per day, per week, um, and then the heavy demand of, of meeting the deadlines. So obviously there's going to be in the, in the job and the work. How do you deal with the stressful parts of your jobs? Any of you can address that. Well, sure. Uh, so one of the things we've done here at Leak Belt is uh, we've uh, actually Mike was a champion for this project, but we've we've made a kind of an internal employee recreation area. So at break times we have associates who go out and play basketball, or uh, they uh, we have a little putting green out back where you can go out and put put a golf ball around, or a, kind of a short walking course. So we've got taken some of our green space that we have on the property and turned that into a recreation area. And um, so out of our 104 acres we have here, we've tried to use some things to make the employee feel like they can get outside and get a breath of fresh air and, and just uh, uh, do something a little different for a few minutes and then go back to work. So uh, like I said, Mike was a kind of a champion for that project to help our employees with that area. That's that's awesome. That what a, what a great idea! It sounds like a really fun company. I I, I think I might want to come and work for Link. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as we wait for more questions to come in, another one on the list, and this is just kind of a fun one. Um, did did you have a role model, and that can be um, anyone, human, actor, superhero, whatever whatever comes to your mind, who would have been a good role model for you that helped inspire you to get to where you are today? I would have to say my father. Um, he always taught me hard work is rewarded. So I've spent many days and many hours under a hood or in the back field and I take pride in everything I do, and he taught me that. So it, it's gotten me to where I am today. And he's always been my role model. I have to say my mom is my role model. She actually works in human resources at the University of West Florida. So um, I've kind of followed her in her career path. And I think it's because I've been constantly inspired by my mom my whole life. <laughs> Well, that's the awesome. like, uh, my parents, you know, growing up, it was never an option not to work, not to have a, not to have a job. It was expected. And we all knew that I have two sisters and we all knew that that was the expectation. And my mother um, worked at a, a manufacturing facility for four years and retired. And I kind of fell in her footsteps and doing different positions in the factory. But um, I, I saw the experience that, she stayed there for that many years and was happy and content with her career. And I feel the same way. I've ended up being here for many, many years and um, love coming to work every day. And that, that means a lot in everyone's life. And you really need to think about that as you venture out of high school, what do you want to do? And um, explore all the perspective, you know, anything that's out there that you think you might want to do. You don't want to wake up on a given day and dread going into to a work a place or a job so choose wisely please do that I really wish I would have not attended school I entered UK as soon as I graduated and that for me personally that was that was not the best choice for me um, and I landed here it's like I like you already know but um, I think that your expectation that's set on you um, will lead you down the right path Thank you so much. Those are our perfect responses. And especially ladies, we appreciate you very much for stepping in and encouraging the, the young females in high school to, to jump out there in the workforce and, and find their place. And definitely listening to parents, to fathers and mothers and uh, taking that good advice. That, that is, that's wonderful. So we appreciate that. So, um, we, we have another fun question that came up in the chat. Miss Sarah has, has pointed out that Link Belt is a Japanese owned company. So have any of you learned to speak 
uh, <laughs> Japanese language as a result of, of something in your job? I uh, have it. I was saying that. <laughs> I've learned a few words, but, uh, <laughs> but I have traveled to Japan uh, several times. So, but uh, I don't speak the language. But in the country, that's, that's close. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this, this, uh, someone has, has posted in that they had an uncle, Donald Smith, um, who had, had taken early retirement. So I don't know if, that, if that's implying that Donald had worked at Link Belt, um, but we do know we had one previously who had an uncle who, who worked there at Link Belt. So that's good, making some connections. Yeah. All right, let's find another question for you. Um, Oh, somebody is asking, did you, uh, do you offer internships or job shadowing opportunities, co-ops, apprenticeships, any of those things that students in high school can be involved in? So currently right now, we don't have anything or a program for high schoolers um, that may be in a particular field or, or looking to kind of get into manufacturing, but that is something that we are actively, you know, kind of exploring as we get to uh, have high schoolers come in and tour the facilities and see that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we do partner with BCTC in their uh, machining program as well as the AMT program. And then we also partner uh, with UK for uh, the College of Engineering uh, Accounting. Uh, we do offer co-op opportunities there. Uh, one thing that I feel like students will find is that Link Belt make sure to make makes a point to that the student knows the school should come first. So it should never be a, a thing where, oh, work is, work is interfering with my school work. That's why my grades are declining, things of that nature. You know, if, if you're going to school for a particular trade or, or for a career um, in engineering or, or finance or anything like that, school should always come first. Um, and that's one thing that I feel like our supervisors, managers do a very good job um, in making sure that they are um, uh, helping that student along uh, along their career path. Thank you, Shay. That's very, very important information. So we, we do want students to know that uh, their education is important and that comes first. We wouldn't want any anything uh, to come in, in, in the way of that and distract them from uh, their schoolwork. So great point. Um, actually, we have another question here that I'll just throw out there to you. Um, if you could have done something different in high school, what would that have been? I'll, I guess I'll answer that question. Um, probably, I had the opportunity in high school probably to do, uh, probably take a welding class or something like that. And I didn't take it. So looking back, I probably should have done that. Even though I don't well today, it would have been a good skill to have and to understand a little bit more what goes on every day with our personnel and a lot of our team members out here. And it's just, uh, I think it's uh, having some skill like that is always important wherever you wind up in life to understand that. So although I can do a few things with my hand, hands, welding is not one of them, but I wish I had that skill. <laughs> Right, that, that's a great point that any opportunities that present themselves, they should definitely take advantage of. One of you mentioned earlier accounting um, skills that they could even come there to do job shadowing or, or something if they're, they're doing accounting. So any type of skill opportunity they have to learn a skill, they should most definitely would want to take advantage of that because you never know how it's gonna come into play uh, later on that in, in your career. And it looks like a long list of opportunities there within your organization. Even as you pointed out earlier, you may start out in one career path and end up in another or maybe several others before you get to the point where, where you decide that's where you're gonna stay and ride it out. So that's great. It's wonderful to know that your company has that growth opportunity for, the, for individuals and especially um, exciting to know that you will take high school graduates and train them. So. Uh, this is this is exciting news for our students, and I think we've, we're close on our time, so I'm going to turn it back over to Zach Gobert. 
Awesome. Thanks, Dorian, to the Link Belt team. Thank you guys so much. This has been a great session. I really appreciate it. We're now going to kick things over to KCTCS. So, Elizabeth, if you want to take it from here. All right. Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to be joining you today. So, my name is Elizabeth Tier, and I work at Jefferson Community and Technical College, which is part of the KCTCS system. Uh, so, it's the Kentucky Community and Technical College system. It's a lot of of uh, terms there for you. But I'm just going to share a short presentation with you all today and just kind of talk to you about what KCTCS and specifically Jefferson can offer you. All right. Here we go. So as I mentioned, Jefferson is just one of 16 different colleges within KCTCS. Um, Jefferson itself has six campus locations, but all combined with all 16 colleges, there's 70 different campus locations that you can choose from as a student. So Jefferson is the largest college. We serve about 12,000 students annually. Um, if you are not in this region, in the area of Louisville, don't worry, all of the yellow dots are different KCTCS colleges, and they have a lot of the same programs that we do. It is going to vary by region what they offer. So for example, if you are going to Bluegrass Community and Technical College, they might have a different need for industry um, related jobs than we do here in Louisville, just because it's a different location. Hey, Elizabeth, if you have a slide deck, I don't know if it shared your screen or not. Oh, let's see. Is it showing anything at all? Let's see. Does this work? Is that better? Yep, that's perfect. Thank you. Okay. Good deal. I'm going to move that over here. I had the green box around it, so can't trust Zoom. All right. Here we go. Can everyone see that better? Yep, that looks good. All right, well, here's all the yellow dots that I mentioned. So where are the Jefferson? We're at the top there in the Louisville area, um, but all of the rest of the dots are available for you to attend. And they've got lots and lots of programs for you to choose from. Um, at Jefferson and at all of our KCTCS institutions, we do have the lowest tuition in the state. Our current tuition rate is $187 per credit hour, which is amazing. And we have certificate, diploma, and associate degree options. So community colleges are two-year colleges. So that means you can get an associate's degree. That's the highest level that we offer. And we can help you earn that. Or if you want to go into an industry, sometimes all that's required is a certificate or a diploma. So certificates and diplomas, the difference between that and an associate's degree is that you don't need general education classes. So no academic classes like English, history, that kind of thing. Um, we serve three types of students. Students that want to go to college, start at a community or technical college and then transfer out and end up with a bachelor's degree or higher somewhere else. We have our workforce students. Those are students who come to Jefferson specifically to earn a credential in order to start in the field of their choice. So these are things like all of our technical programs. Um, Kentucky Fame was mentioned. We also offer Kentucky Fame at Jefferson. It's a fantastic opportunity for students who are really committed and responsible and want to do well in a specific industry. This also encompasses anything in the healthcare region or anything um, that's considered hands-on learning is our workforce students. And then last, but certainly not least, we teach English as a second language to students. And those are our transitional students who need a little bit of extra help before taking those college level classes. This is just a list of some of our traditional programs, if you will. We have a lot of students who will earn that associate's degree and transfer on. Um, if you're interested in engineering or something like that, um, that would be the Associate of Science transfer. Anything that's not STEM related would be Associate of Arts. And then we have students who go into business administration, communication arts, computer and IT. There's so many different options that we can help students um, really figure out what it is they wanna do. It was mentioned earlier that 
it's okay to not know what you want to do. Um, there's lots of, of things in place within KCTCS to help students figure out what that is. And sometimes knowing what you don't want to do is just as beneficial as knowing what you do want to do. Just very quickly, these are six of our different partnerships that we have for transferring. Um, if you're not in this region, I can almost guarantee you that whatever KCTCS college is closest to you will also have partnerships with colleges and universities within that region as well. So our largest partnership is with UofL since they're just down the street with us. Um, but we also have several other partnerships that aren't necessarily as close to home. So this is probably the best slide that we have. And we get so many questions about this. How do I go straight into the workforce and how much am I gonna be making? How much am I gonna be paid? So as you can see, these are some pretty high salaries for these different workforce options. And not a whole lot of schooling is required. So there's some of these on this list that are making a whole lot more than I am. And they only went to school for one and a half to two years maximum. Some people who are on this list who have jobs in this area, like welding, for example, you can start being a welder with just a certificate and you can earn a certificate in as little as one semester or 16 weeks. So this is something to keep in mind. I know welding was mentioned earlier as a, a wish for having done so in high school. It is a fantastic skill to have. And if you are wanting to go into a technical field, um, adding up all of these different things and just kind of adding to your skill sets is going to make you very, very desirable um, for people who are hiring for these positions. So just something to keep in mind. And at Jefferson and within all of KCTCS, we're here to help you figure out what's needed for whatever industry that you're interested in pursuing. And one of the biggest questions we get is, well, how am I going to pay for it? So programs like Kentucky Fame um, and other, you know, things that employ are employer related, they will reimburse you for your tuition or they'll just pay your tuition up front. And that's fantastic. Um, but some students don't have that option. So we always suggest that students do the FAFSA. It's a free application for federal student aid and it will see if you're eligible for grants or student loans. Grants are free money, so you don't have to pay them back. They're automatically applied for you. Student loans, um, we always suggest not taking out student loans if at all possible um, because of KCTCS's um, low tuition. Normally our students do not have to take out loans. We also have lots of different scholarships. So the Work Ready Scholarship is specifically for Kentuckians who are going into an industry-related field that is technical in nature. So that is probably going to be one of the easiest scholarships to apply for and be um, given that, especially if you're a high school senior and you don't have any other kind of college experience. We also have different partnerships with UPS, McDonald's, and Amazon. So these are just places that you can work at and then they will reimburse you for your schooling tuition fees. And last, but certainly not least, this is how you get started. Um, these steps are going to be the same for pretty much any college that you go to within KCTCS. So this is going to be an application. So you just apply online, you can submit your final high school transcript after you test, um, or excuse me, after you graduate. Based on that transcript and your GPA, we'll see if you need to take our free placement exams or not. Most students do not need placement testing. And then of course, we want you to file that FAFSA and last but not least, attend an orientation where you actually register for your classes. And that is when you'll get your class schedule, meet with an advisor and make sure that you know what classes you wanna take, what degree you wanna pursue, all of those things. So that is all that I have for you today. Is there any questions? that you have for me? Oh, I see, of course, that I didn't see the slide deck question at the beginning. Um, but I can answer questions uh, about pretty much anything college related. It does not have to be related to Jefferson or even KCTCS, so feel free. Well, I think just in the spirit of Busted Business, Elizabeth, how about you tell us about how you got into your career field and what you like about it? Yeah. 
So I ended up in a higher ed. My original background was in communications and journalism. I decided I did not want to do journalism, but I really liked communications and I really liked talking with people, meeting with people, um, just helping people in general. And so I happened upon um, a posting in an admissions capacity. Uh, I'm originally from Texas. So this is at a technical college back in Texas. And I really have a spot, a soft spot for technical education um, just because of my family's background. Um, and so that's what got me started. And then we moved to Kentucky for uh, my spouse's PhD work. So uh, whew, that's too much for me, right? <laughs> no, thank you, but to each their own. Um, and so I was able to get hired on here at Jefferson and I just, I absolutely love it. It's wonderful to be able to meet with students, talk to them, figure out, okay, what are your circumstances? Where are you coming from? What is it that you ultimately want to do and how can I help you get there? Um, you always have to take a first step. And so my job is helping students just get started with taking that first step. And we're here to answer questions for them throughout their entire educational journey. Um, but sometimes the hardest part is just to get started. And yeah, I see we have a- Yeah, I was gonna say, we got a question came through in the chat. Is the deadline to apply for the fall semester? So KCTCS, we are open enrollment. So that means all 16 colleges, you can apply up until the very bitter end. Um, it's a free application. So all you need to do, you can even just go to kctcs.edu and there should be a button that says apply now. And our fall classes start on, I think it's like August 17th, around there, around mid-August is when they start. And you can apply up to the Friday before classes start. So you can cut it really close. The only thing is that we have to have something, either a transcript or test scores in order for you to be put into classes. So the earlier you apply, the better, just because you can get all of that taken care of. Registration for the fall semester opens on March 1st. So you could be a senior in high school and get all of your admissions steps completed. That last slide had the five steps. And on March 1st, you could register for classes and you could have your class schedule before you even graduate high school, which I think is pretty awesome. That's one thing you don't have to worry about anymore. We try to make it as quick and easy and painless as possible for you to do so. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, for anyone that wants to check it out, I know KCTCS has a ton of information on their website, so definitely look into it. It's a great resource. And Elizabeth, thank you so much for being on here. Thanks again to our Link Belt team, and thank you all students for tuning in. I hope you all learned something today. We will be back next week, March 2nd, for our equine month. So for the month of March, we're going to be talking all about equine and agriculture. I'm excited to have you all join us. Thanks again. Bye. Thank you. Bye.